Well, welcome back, folks. Today we're going to begin the conversation around continuing on with the restoration of the seat. And this is not a conversation about the seat pan per se. We've already talked about this in some detail. This is a replacement seat pan that I painted and uh, powder coated and discussed earlier. So we're not really going to talk about the seat pan. Rather, we're going to talk about the seat foam. And I have not been able to find a reproduction foam for this uh, seat. I have found entire seats, complete seats, but that's really not what I wanted. This is the foam off the second or replacement seat that I'd ordered. That, this came with the pan that I'd powder coated. The original foam that came with the bike, the original seat, the foam was virtually destroyed. There's really nothing left of it. It was very crumbly and dry. What I think I'm going to do is uh, attempt to reuse this foam. Now the top of the foam here is nice and soft. It's got a little bit of a hairline crack here in a couple of spots, but generally it's very soft and in, in pretty good shape. The bottom here, I really had to essentially remove a layer because the, the rust from the seat pan uh, where all that pitting was, uh, ended up uh, flaking off and sticking to this part of the seat. Some of you have probably have seen it before. So I, I removed all of that. And in the process, I really took oh, a layer, a bit of a layer of the foam off to get down to nice, soft foam again. And uh, again, it was probably that much I took off. In most places, you can see some places a little more. The real issue, though, is the edges here of the foam are dry and very brittle and are, have started to deteriorate. And this is where it wraps around the edge of the seat pan, especially over here on this side, which would be the left side of the seat when it's in use. Really starting about here towards the front on both sides and then all the way around well, pretty much all the way around. I could probably salvage the very rear, but I don't think I'm going to. So my plan is, is I'm going to cut level with um, the seat itself. I'm going to remove this deteriorated or deteriorating foam all the way around and just remove it. And then I'm going to replace it with a piece of carpet padding. So let's take a look at that next. This is just a piece of uh, 7 16 Imperial uh, carpet padding. It's um, what, seven millimeters probably, something like that thick. This is a high quality, it's a high-end carpet pad. It's foam and it has this fiberglass uh, backer that's been applied to it. And that's what you see here. This is this is just stranded fiberglass. Real real thin sheet of like fiberglass cloth basically. You can see here. So what I, I've done is I laid this out on the with the seat pan. So here's what the seat pan will look like and you can see generally how I laid it out. I just drew uh, I put the seat pan down first, laid the I cut out a rough shape, laid the foam over it and then traced it and you know, allowed myself a couple of inches, around 50 millimeters around the edges here. And this is about where the edge, that would be this edge right here of the seat pan, is going to wrap around. Once I traced the approximate edge of the seat pan, I took a X-Acto knife and then I just slit the, the fiberglass sheeting or backer, as you can see there, to allow it to easily bend like that. So my plan is, once I've trimmed these uh, edges off the original foam, so this is flat, I'm going to attach this piece and this orientation so the fiberglass sheet will face the pan. And this, where you can see the tracing, should be just about right to lay into this section here. In other words, it'll, it'll match the contour of the original foam. Probably use a spray adhesive. I haven't decided yet my technique, but probably will uh, spray it. Spray adhesive on, on the two pieces and attach them together. And then I will use this to wrap around the edges of the pan. 
like that. And then this will be attached to the foam. So this then will start to emulate the original foam here. It will actually replace it. This is a very resistant, crush resistant foam. It's about the thinnest I could find in a product like this, this particular thickness. So that's my general game plan. Now I don't have the seat cover yet. It's been ordered. I'm expecting I, was, I will re, be receiving it here in, within the next, oh, probably a week or so from this recording. Once I have the uh, new cover, and we'll talk about that uh, as part of this video, once I have it, I'll come back and we'll review the, the cover and the decisions I made around the cover and why I went the way I did. Then it'll be just a matter of trimming the foam, uh, attaching this piece to the, the original foam like I just talked about, and then uh, overlaying that on the seat pan, and then um, doing the reupholstery of the seat. That's, that's my general game plan. I've never done this exactly this way before. What I have done in the past when I had to build up the edges of seats, I've just taken some closed cell foam, very similar to this, and I've glued it around the edges. Uh, separate from this piece, but I'm going to take a different approach here. I don't know if it's going to work. It might be an utter failure before it's over. I don't think so. I think it'll work okay, uh, frankly. I did consider running the foam of the pad in the opposite direction, and that would be in this orientation with the fiberglass uh, facing material facing the foam. Uh, I didn't do that for the primary reason, as I was concerned that when you fold this, you see that you create a crack, so that crack would be out. I don't know if that would create an issue or not. I'm thinking it would be better if I went like this, in this orientation. That way you, you create a rounded, a more rounded edge here than you would have had otherwise. It would be more of a squared edge. That's my thinking. Uh, so we'll, we'll pick this video up uh, a bit later. Again, it'll probably be a week or so once I got the seat cover and we can see how these things start to fit. Well it's been almost exactly a week since I shot the first part of this uh, video segment talking about the seat and I have received the new seat cover. Obviously this is not it. This is the original cover I took off that second uh, seat I purchased as a replacement for the original that came with the bike. There's the new seat cover. Looks to be very well made. It's virtually identical to the original with two exceptions. One is the texture here. Let me get the original back. The texture here is a little bit more uh, pronounced than here. And the font, the Honda font on the rear of the seat, is just a touch larger. It's a, it looks like the same style of font and it looks to be positioned correctly, but on the new seat, it's just ever so slightly larger than the original. Now, when I went to do research on new seat covers, there's, there's quite a number of options out there, actually more than what I was expecting. I found at least one supplier in the UK, two suppliers in the US, and two or three in the Far East, primarily Thailand, and I think there was uh, one or two in Indonesia. And I looked at them all carefully, and I think any of them would have probably have worked. But I went with this one, which came from Thailand, for uh, a couple of reasons. One is the number of sections here. You can see these where the, where the pleats are. There's 12 on the original seat cover. There are 12 of these. And on most, in fact, all but one of the others, they did not have 12 of these individual sections. They had uh, anywhere from, I think, 9 to 11 in a range in there for whatever reason. So the seat, the surface of the seat wasn't identical. This was the only seat cover that I found that had the right number of sections with the Honda logo. I did find one in the U.S. that uh, U.S. made that it had, it looked, looked like a very nice seat, it had the Honda logo, but it had, I believe it was 11 of these pads rather than 12. 
the rest of them had um, a number of other variations. The seat pattern was different or they were missing the logo on the back. Regardless, uh, this one had the right combination of features that I was looking for, so that's why I bought this one. Price-wise, there wasn't a huge uh, variation in price. They're all within, I'm going to say, 10 or 15 U.S. dollars of each other. Yeah, and it didn't take long to get it. I think I had this within two weeks, maybe, 10 days, something like that. And uh, I haven't done any test fitting yet of the foam to the seat cover. Uh, that'll be coming up here shortly, but um, didn't want to review the cover with you first. Now let's talk about a little bit of work I did to the pan itself to prepare it. Clearly this is the pan. Uh, what I want to talk about is the trim that I added back onto the seat. And this is the original trim that came off of the seat. I cleaned it up really well. I used a plastic safe cleaner, which I've talked about before. I did not use acetone or a brake cleaner because I was afraid that was going to soften and damage the, uh, this vinyl. So I used a plastic safe cleaner and a very soft brush and I, and I scrubbed the, the trim really well and cleaned it all up. If you recall, the trim uh, from a previous video was short about that much. And I did attempt to put the trim back in the same position it came from, just to make it a little easier. It was pretty easy to tell how it came off. But I had a gap here in the trim. So what I did is I took some of the trim off the original seat that came on the bike right here. You can tell that that's nice and stiff. This was actually quite stiff as well, and we'll talk about that in a second. But I took and just cut a piece of this off and fitted in this gap right here. And then I took a, uh, two pieces of high quality duct tape. This is the duct tape that I use. It's a uh, Gorilla brand. This is really good stuff. It's the best duct tape I've ever found. And it's the most aggressive for sure. And uh, very good quality uh, duct tape. By the way, a little trivia. Duct tape, and it's originally was spelled D-U-C-T. D-U-C-T as in a duct. A heating duct uh, was originally developed or was invented during World War II by a woman who worked in a U.S. Music, uh, munitions factory making um, you know, bombs and explosives and small arms rounds and she came up with the idea of this type of a tape to seal cartridge boxes to waterproof them before they were shipped and I think she had uh, one or two of her sons in the service at the time, probably in Europe. And Anyway, uh, she came up with the idea of designing this kind of a waterproof tape, and then after the war it became known as a duct tape used for sealing heating ducts. It's actually not the best product for that anymore. You want to really use an aluminized tape now. There is a brand that's spelled, at least in North America, spelled D-U-C-K, but I think that's just a play on words and spelling. But it was originally D-U-C-T. So I digress there. Anyway, I took, uh, because I had uh, joints here, what I did is I took uh, that duct tape and I just, you can see I put a, a piece here and here, I know it's black on black, just to seal those ends down. Now before I uh, fit the vinyl strip around the edge, what I did is I put the vinyl and the pan itself in my oven at around, oh, I guess I brought it up to around 120 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, 49 degrees Celsius, something like that. I didn't want to get it too hot because I didn't want to melt the vinyl, but what I did want to do is soften the vinyl enough that I could easily conform it to the shape of the pan, even though it, had a, it already had a rough shape, because that's where it came from. But I heated both up, and then I, put, I took it out of the oven, put the uh, trim on the pan edge, and then put it back in the oven, uh, same temperature for about uh, 10 minutes or so, let it normalize at that temperature, took it back out, made sure the trim was down all the way around. And then I applied the, this duct tape to um, 
the, the warm parts and just uh, conformed it to shape. Just didn't want these edges, this piece to come out. I debated whether to put uh, strips of duct tape around the edge here also, but I decided not to. Um, this fits pretty good. It could, since it was warmed up to that temperature I just talked about, it um, conformed very nicely and normalized, like you can see there. And I think we're about ready to go ahead and upholster the seat. I'm going to add the two rubber bumpers here before I do that, and which I have new uh, inventory from Honda. They still support those bumpers. I'll do a test fit of the new seat cover right here. I'll do a test fit with a foam first, uh, the original foam, and uh, eventually, of course, I'll have to go ahead and start the process of reupholstering. Now that a piece of carpet pad that I talked about in the last segment, I'm not sure whether that's going to work or not, so I'm more than willing to not use that. If I get to the, to the upholstery part of it and I realize that it's not working, uh, I'll, I'll just throw it aside and move on and, and try some other things. I will also warm this vinyl gently. I'm not going to overheat it now. If it was warm out, it's, it's winter time here now, but if it was warm, nice summer day, I'd put this right out in the sun and let the sun soften it a little bit. You don't want to overwarm or overstretch these vinyls because what you'll do is you'll start pulling the seams apart if the vinyl gets too warm. So you don't want to get it too, too warm, uh, but just soften up a little bit so it'll, it'll flex for me. So this will go in the oven uh, just before I go ahead and fit it to the seat. But I've got some more work to do before I get there. I'm not going to show all of that. I've, I think I've shown some of that before in other videos. Uh, and it could take some time to do test fittings and to fiddle around a little bit. Uh, so I'm not going to show it all. I will probably bring you back either partway through or when the seat's done, whatever the spirit moves. Uh, well, it's about three hours later. And as you can see, I've got the seat all complete. It didn't take me three hours to finish the seat. Uh, I ran out of two-faced carpet type tape that I used to secure some of the parts. I'll come back to that and discuss that in a little more detail in a minute. And I also uh, kept my oven on low and returned the unit as I was working on it back to the oven Oh, four or five times for five minutes each time to keep the vinyl soft and easy to work with. So probably an hour, 15 minutes maybe total uh, to complete the upholster of it out of that three hours the rest was running around and such. Anyway, the seat is finished and I'm very pleased with the way it turned out. The cover fit perfectly. I had no issues with cover fit. And I think you can see there what it, what it looks like a bit. This, this seam right here is nice and even all the way around. It fits just as I would like it to or expect it to. It's nice and soft. See that side. Of course that side. Get a better look at what it looks like there. And uh, one of the things I try to achieve is the seam here. You see the seam where these edges were stitched. I always strive to have a very uniform fit. In other words, these two seams, you can see where my thumbs are, should be uniform in terms of how they're positioned on the pan. And in this case, they're about as close as you're ever going to get. A little dusty yet to see. I haven't really wiped everything off from working on it. But you can see the seam all the way around is about as close as you're ever going to get, I think. I did make uh, one adjustment from what my original plan was, and if you recall, you know, allow me to get a piece of the foam. This is the original foam. I originally was going to uh, install the foam with this fiberglass facing down, and that is facing the pan. And I decided to change my mind. And as you can see here from the color right here, that's the 
this uh, carpet uh, pad, that's what this is, I reversed it. And the reason I did that is as I was attempting to put things together, I found that where I had cut that, that face material with an X-Acto knife in the previous segment here, it allowed it to bend easier around the corners right here and made actually just a cleaner fit. So I just flipped the, the pad over and have it positioned like this. So the fiberglass facing is uh, facing the original foam on the seat. Just made it a little easier, I found. Uh, what I did is I used two-faced tape or carpet tape. That's why I had to run out to the hardware store because I didn't have enough. This is the, the roll I picked up. And uh, I used the two-faced tape to hold the foam, that would be this, this carpet pad foam, to the original uh, pan. So I used strips of that two-faced tape, like this, oh, probably six or eight of them, and then I attached the carpet pad foam to the pan. And then the original seat foam, the closed cell foam that came with the seat, is not attached to anything. In other words, that's floating in there. That's not, uh, I didn't use the tape to hold that in place. I didn't want to. I wanted that seat foam, which is relatively delicate, to be able to move around. The reason I used uh, two-phase tape rather than spray adhesive right here, which I considered using is, uh, and I oftentimes do in this kind of an application, uh, I was concerned this would be a little bit too permanent. And in the event that I had to lift the foam off the pan to adjust it, uh, I thought it'd be easier to work with this than this, which is, once it sticks together, it, it, I was afraid it was going to pull the foam apart if I had to reposition it. As it turned out, I didn't have to reposition uh, fortunately, uh, I got it right the first time, so it, it ended up being a moot point, actually, but that's why I used the tape versus the spray adhesive. Here are the uh, trimmings off the original seat foam. Now, if you recall, around the edges here, I had to, that, that foam, I wanted to cut it back because it had you know, these edges were all dried out and damaged, especially in the front sections right here. So what I did is just, once I had everything in place, I, f I actually flipped it over carefully and just took a scissors and trimmed off that foam, as you can see there. And another change of plans is I only trimmed the, the original foam off back to about here and here and uh, then wrap the uh, carpet pad foam around into here. I left the original style foam in through here, so actually there's a, a notch right here where the uh, carpet pad meets the original style foam. And uh, that worked out fine. Uh, I thought the fit and the finish came out pretty good considering. So that's what's left of the original foam. And this was obviously uh, very dried out and you can see there, just it's crumbly. Uh, the positioning of the Honda logo on the back came out again about as, as good as I could have expected it to. I was very pleased with the quality and the fit of this seat cover. Uh, it, it, it's a very good quality cover. It seems to be exactly the right um, shape and whoever made this, and again I think it came from Thailand, whoever made this took care and got it right. Um, shows good workmanship, good choice of materials, and uh, it's a good good quality piece. So that's the, uh, the seat. I'm as pleased as I could be with how it came out. I think it, uh, it looks really good. Now this will just be set aside for now because I'm not quite ready to put it on the bike. But it is done and uh, we'll call this part of the project complete. And that will bring this video regarding the restoration of the seat to a close as well. Any issues, questions, thoughts, drop me a note. Otherwise, as usual, 
Thanks for watching.